I'm Eileen Nolan Kressel, also known as Ike. I grew up in Brooklyn. Try to mention that at every opportunity since it has now become a cool place. It wasn't so cool when I was growing up there, but glad to be from there and give Brooklyn a plug. Moved here in 1971. Sometime after that, joined Inkling Studio, a wonderful printmaking cooperative in Southwest Portland. It was there that I worked for a long time on a big French tool press, mostly subtractive linoleum cuts, where you can get several colors from a single linoleum block. Doing some balancing of prints and painting Printmaking is a technical medium, and it's often nice to balance that, what feels like a freedom with acrylic painting. What I'm currently doing is revisiting old prints and putting them together differently, bringing the color prints into the black and white prints and doing some repurposing. I'm here at the First Unitarian Church in Portland, Oregon, where I have a solo show, really about storytelling. I feel like we're all a result of our respective experiences. And one of the ways that I express what that which is going on around me is through art. With a houseboat on the Willamette River, I've become aware of how the river really doesn't divide east and west, but brings people and brings the city together. And there's a lot, lots of wonderful life on the riverbanks, which I've observed. Lots of runners and walkers, dog walkers, cyclists. This is uh, a scene, it suggests being having dinner inside the houseboat, uh, and the, the new Tillicum Bridge is in the background. This is uh, Always Listen to the Turtle, it's based on a story that Gloria Steinem tells. She was a college student in some kind of nature class. She wandered off and came upon a turtle and picked it up thinking she was saving it from being run over and brought it all the way back to her instructor who said, you know, that turtle has probably been walking for days to find a safe place to lay its eggs. So. The takeaway from that is when you think you have a good idea or know something better, always listen to the turtle. This one is called the first French braid. When my daughter Jenny, now grown with two children, was in third grade, uh, everybody seemed to have to have a French braid. And although I feel like I'm reasonably adept using my hands, I just failed miserably and could not make a French braid for my daughter. So hair would just fly everywhere. So that's my reflection on the first French braid. This is a uh, macchiato versus latte. Some dear old friends were visiting from the Bay Area and we took a walk along the river and we stopped in to get coffee. And my friend, who's an international scientist, ordered a macchiato. I had never heard of such a thing. And there was clearly a whole ceremony and a science to making this very special drink. And it finally arrived in this itty bitty cup. I thought a latte was fancy and this was like a whole other world. So that little experience with my friends inspired macchiato versus latte. This is called Birders. My husband has gone on a lot of Audubon trips, the India and Borneo and Greece, and would usually often send me a bird of the day from these exotic places. And one day we went on a local birding trip. As a retired psychotherapist, I found myself observing the birders more than the birds, hence the birders. This print is called Her Hour of Resolve, and it's about my morning, a time that I try to uh, protect and uh, enjoy reading the New York Times, uh, listening to classical music, keeping talk to a minimum. This is a suggestion here of our twin grandchildren. With these prints, what I've done, I started with a black and white linoleum cut, and then I have cut up old color prints of mine 
um, along with some decorative papers and then collaged on top of them. It starts as a black and white print and then these are elements from other prints that I've done um, that I have uh, torn up and collaged on top. So the show is uh, storytelling from my experience and repurposing of sorts because I've taken old prints and looked at them differently, rearranged them and repurposed and found a way also of using pounds of prints. I've been doing prints for about 30 years and I have pounds of them. This one is when one thing becomes another. It's subtractive linoleum cuts that I've done and torn up and reassembled in a different way. And I thought, we often think that things are always gonna be the way they currently are, but everything becomes something else in a way. So here old prints have been cut up, rearranged, reassembled, and when one thing becomes another, and it became another.